Hello Internet, welcome to Mostly Harmless Planet, my name is Chris. Let's talk about cybernetics. When you hear the word cybernetics, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Maybe it's Cybermen from Doctor Who, Terminator from the film series, or maybe Commander Data from Star Trek. All of these are valid examples of cybernetics, which is the merging of man and machine in order to amplify or to improve the way a person can function and, and in, to improve their capabilities. And this is done by means of electronic and robotic implants which interact with the person's neural system. Now this may sound like it's still far in the realms of fantasy and science fiction and won't happen for a long time, but it is closer than you think. Professor Kevin Warwick of the University of Reading is a leading researcher in the field of cybernetics and has had many breakthroughs over the last few decades where he's been working in this field. In 2002, he received an implant in his left arm which would read the neural signals telling his fist to clench and it would interpret these signals and send them onto machinery and onto devices which he would then control. This means that by simply clenching his fist he could command a light bulb to turn on, he could command an alarm to go off or he could control a robotic hand. He even managed to demonstrate the range this kind of technology has by setting up a robotic hand in Colorado then controlling it from his university in England. This is a distance of several thousand miles and to be able to exercise control over machinery for in that kind of distance is rather remarkable. With this implant he also went one step further down the road of communication. His wife had a similar implant in her arm so whenever she clenched her fist the signal from her brain would be transmitted as a digital signal to him and the implant would retransmit that signal back to his brain meaning that he could feel when she was clenching her fist. He would feel it as a small pulse in his arm. This shows the potential for what kind of communication systems await. Perhaps one day we no longer need to communicate by talking, by drawing or by writing, but merely brain-to-brain -brain communication. Today Kevin Warwick is working with adapting brain cells from rats and growing them and nurturing them to be able to interact and control small wheeled robots. The brain cells would pick up stimuli from sensors, would interpret them and would decide how to react accordingly. This again shows the potential for the human brain to be able to control much larger, much more complex and intrinsicate pieces of machinery from any distance and to integrate ourselves as part of the machinery, making work more efficient and increasing our capabilities as human beings. Perhaps one day we'll be able to expand our memories, we'll be able to see new types of radio waves, maybe we'll be able to see ultraviolet rays, see x-rays, see a whole different world than the one we're just used to. This would be a massive technological advance and an advance for our species. Kevin Warwick even predicts that one day it will be inevitable that human and machine will merge to create a new form of cyborg or cybernetic human race. Of course with these kinds of predictions there's always the question of morality, whether what he's doing is morally right and ethically right and whether this kind of work should continue. These predictions and his work cast into doubt the very definitions of what it means to be human. Would we still be human with cybernetic implants because we are essentially creating a new race with new capabilities, we are basically fast forwarding evolution to match what we need. Firstly the question of superhuman races. In Star Trek there was a period in human history where there was a eugenics war. What this was is that genetically enhanced and superior human beings were trying to eradicate the inferior ones. Now Star Trek addressed this kind of issue and what that would mean for human development in the form of a character called Khan. Genetically engineered to be superior so as to lead others to peace in a world at war. But we were condemned as criminals forced into exile. For centuries we slept. My name is... This character, which appears frequently in the Star Trek universe, is essentially a relic of this genetically superior race, which re-emerges later in the timeline. And it creates havoc because he is intent on destroying the inferior, normal, human. In Star Trek The Next Generation there's an episode called The Measure of a Man where the humanity of Commander Data, an android, is explored. The questions are asked, is he human? Is he property? To what extent does he have the right to choose his own fate? How autonomous and how individual is he? Commander, would you enlighten us? What is required for sentience? Intelligence. 
Self-awareness? Consciousness? Prove to the court that I am sentient. This is absurd. We all know you're sentient. So I am sentient, but Commander Data is not. That's right. Uh-huh. Why? This is just a short extract. I recommend you watch the full clip. I've put the link somewhere, either in the doobly-doo downstairs or it should be next to me. I recommend you really go and watch it. It's a very fascinating debate, and it does encourage thought. It's a very serious piece of television. It's not just science fiction adventure. It is actual philosophical, meaningful debate, which is very relevant given the advances in cybernetics. How long will it be before we will be having this debate in real life? How long will it be before we start determining when a human with cybernetic implants stops being human and whether or not we should restrict their rights as humans or whether they should be given more rights for being better than humans, which they would eventually be. I've also added in links to Kevin Warwick's work in the doobly-doo downstairs, so I would urge you to go and read more about him. There's some truly fascinating stuff that he's up to and truly fascinating stuff that he plans, so I would encourage you to go and look at that and make up your own mind about this. What do you think the future of humanity looks like in regards to cybernetics? And would you be happy to receive cybernetic implants in the future to enhance your capabilities? Would you feel that robs you of your humanity? Would you feel it enhances your humanity? Because there are so many different perspectives on this. Philosophers saying one thing, engineers saying another thing, the middlemen saying a completely different thing altogether. I think becoming aware of what's happening in the world of science and having a good opinion and a good thought on it is important in this day and age. It will one day become the leading force behind our progress in the world. So with that thought I will leave you. Thank you very much again for watching. I really do encourage you to share this if you found it interesting. Perhaps somebody else will find it interesting. Thank you very much for watching. I'm, I hope you've enjoyed the video. So with that it is goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. See you next time.